These are the Chat City interviews from 103.2 Preston FM. And uh, I've now got my next guest in the studio and uh, lovely to welcome Grandma into the studio from Preston Buddhist Centre. So a very good morning to you. Morning, Huey. Lovely, lovely to meet you. And I'm going to put the right microphone on because we've changed microphones. So a very good morning. Morning, Huey. Oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> I, I was saying at the, the beginning of the programme that lots of people, including we at home, mm-hmm. around the house have lots of Buddhas. Oh, right, yes. And I don't know what it is about Buddhas because I don't know a lot about Buddhism, uh-huh. but somehow people seem to feel quite comfortable, uh-huh. quite secure in having a Buddha yeah. in the house. Let's make them feel peaceful then. Ah, so I think that's what it is. Yeah. So it's lovely to welcome you this morning. So maybe, maybe given that we do all have Buddhas yeah. in our house, maybe you can tell us who is Buddha? Okay, well, there's many, many um, answers to that question. Um, You can have the answer that they give you at school, which is the Buddha was a man who lived two and a half thousand years ago who developed his mind and got rid of um, all the things that causes us pain like anger and pride and jealousy and feeling upset, got rid of that from his mind, so he became very peaceful. But also, the real story is that Buddhas are around all the time. It is a a very developed mind um, that you can tune into. And um, I think perhaps that's why the little statues of Buddha make people feel uh, calm because maybe there's a little holy being entering in there um, and helping them. Also, people have connections with Buddhism. You know, we believe in previous lives and um, people brings up maybe a little imprint of a memory of being helped um, by a Buddha and feeling peaceful. But some people can kind of uh, tune into that. Other people think that's rubbish. Um, so, you know, Buddhism is good for people who also may think that's rubbish because there's very good philosophy where you can help yourself um, understand yourself, understand your mind, make yourself feel calm, make yourself be able to deal with situations better and uh, generally be happier. That's what Buddhism is about, trying to be able to do everything we do, say everything we say, but feel happier about it. Um, that's what it is yeah I, I was going to ask and I'm, I'm sure we could spend a full program talking about what Buddhism is what is it not is it a religion um, it is a religion um, you can also treat you can take from Buddhism what you want so it is a religion but you can just treat that as a philosophy um, you can take parts of it and learn to meditate and just take the parts you want or you can take the whole gambit and become a Buddhist you do with it what you want Um, basically it is a method to train your mind so that it feels happier because our problems we think they're outside our mind but actually our happiness and unhappiness is feelings inside our mind Lots of people said that. I think Shakespeare said that. It's not just the Buddha. <laughs> right. So, so what, what are the teachings of Buddha then? Um, well, there are 84,000 different teachings. So <laughs> <laughs> we've got what, are, what are some of the most popular <laughs> teachings of Buddha? Okay. Maybe? I think the main thing to get in Buddhism is this understanding, and you have to understand it from doing little experiments with yourself and gaining experience, that actually when you're feeling happy when you're feeling unhappy what is it it's a feeling in the mind so rather than running around trying to control the outside circumstances then we apply methods to try and make our mind deal with these things that are happening to us that's the main thing that's what buddhism is teaching us to train our mind and be happy and lots of people these days uh, at a drop of a hat Mm. use the word not medication, meditation. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, maybe it (laughs) is medication. Well, maybe it is. But, uh, I mean, meditation within Buddhism, I would take is a very serious form of meditation, is it? Meditation can start at the beginning just like relaxing the mind, getting rid of stress, um, just chilling a little bit. And then when you've got the mind to relax, you can meditate on different Um, subjects so one would be say love so if you're feeling you're having a problem with somebody and you're not liking them 
wanting to get angry with them, then you might meditate on love and you might get yourself to empathize with them and understand them um, and to feel loving towards them. So there's a whole series of meditations to get to there. Um, another would be patience, uh, where you can just learn to accept what's happening and, and calm your mind. Um, another would be wisdom, which is really deep, <laughs> about how things are, how they exist. It's an intriguing subject. Um, and yeah, well, you know, many, many subjects. And uh, I, you just probably touched on some of them. I was going to say is, are there any plain and simple teachings that can be remembered quite easily by most people? Um, well, I think you can remember, you know, that my problems are within. Mm. And also to try and understand people rather than get angry with them. Try and understand. Everybody just wants to be happy. Nobody's doing anything other than trying to get rid of their own problems and try and make themselves happy. So we're all the same. So um, I think if we could develop peace in our mind, you know, a huge amount of things would happen. Like maybe some of the wars would stop mm. um, if we got rid of that anger and that greediness. But, um, you know... It's great. Everybody has got the potential within them to be, to really develop their mind and um, have a very, very positive, happy minds. Everybody's got that potential. There isn't anyone without it. But, uh, I mean, how difficult is it to achieve that? Because for most mm. human beings, mm. we always look outside ourselves. Mm. We, we blame other people. Mm. It's other people who make us sad. It's other people mm. who make us happy. And I also fall into the trap that I can hear about someone who maybe is not well, somebody mm. in hospital, and I think, well, I should thank my lot because mm. I'm not like that person. Mm. And yet a day later, mm. I'm back to moaning and groaning mm. about yeah, life like everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> How difficult then is it to take charge of those thoughts? It's not difficult, but it may take some time. So it's like um, when your mind does that and wants to blame people, it's not whipping yourself. It's taking that as a bit of a joke, laughing at yourself, not taking yourself too seriously. And then just um, gradually engaging in different thought process and some meditation and doing a little bit at a time. And then gradually over time, if somebody engaged in Buddhist meditation and came to classes for a year and then looked once a week, say, and then look back at the end of the year, I'm sure they would find that um, some of their difficulties um, had diminished. But, you know, you have to be patient and enjoy it and, mm. you know, not take yourself too seriously. <laughs> yes. We yeah. take ourselves so seriously. We, we do, don't yeah. we? And I, mm. I, I mean, so, but we, which is probably the stronger then? Is it feelings or is it the mind? Is it the mind that really is superior and can take control? Or do the feelings tend to stop us from using that mind to take control? I think the feelings are part of mind. Feelings are part of your mind. So you're dealing with the part of your mind. Um, but there are other parts of your mind that you can use to um, persuade those feelings to change into something which feels a bit more comfortable. That's what it is. And then if you're a person who uh, likes those little Buddha statues and those little ornaments and you've got a little bit of faith there, um, then you can ask for a little bit of help as well. Yeah. And can I ask how long you have been in Buddhist? I've been a Buddhist for 30 years. Um, so right at the beginning of the Preston Buddhist Centre, the one that they call Vajravarahi, I kind of uh, began that um, with the help of the leader of this spirit, this tradition, we're called Kadampa Buddhists. So we have every type of Buddhism has a, a leader. So our leader is a Tibetan monk. So with his help, I started this in Preston. And how does it impact then, I mean, on your daily life? Uh, you know, most people go along uh, about their daily life and they go to church on a Sunday. If mm. they're religious, they go mm. to church. But how does buzzed Buddhism affect your daily life? All the time. It's with me all the time. So I'm always um, aware of what my mind's doing. And um, sometimes I might lose it and forget. Um, but that's after 30 years. So what happens to most people, like to begin with, exactly what you say. 
you, I can remember 30 years ago, I'd go down to where we used to meet and uh, really enjoy it and feel better afterwards. And then the next morning, I completely forget. <laughs> <laughs> but I had this feeling that it was quite good and I'd go back next week. And, you know, just over time, things improve. It's not an instant fix. Um, it's a slow thing, but it's enjoyable. And when people come to our centre, they enjoy it. And, you know, it doesn't matter if somebody goes off and loses their rag in the middle of the week. It's just being natural. But it's okay. most of the time now, for situations that we may encounter that... Mm upset us greatly yeah, yeah and in fact when you then think about it it's probably so immaterial in your life are you at a position where you don't react in that same kind of way oh no sometimes things happen you know i can feel upset but i'll probably deal with it straight away i'll probably go away and take five and i think if i look back now i can deal with things things that would have upset me say even last year this year i'll take it in my stride Different things happen to you. Sometimes you're having an easy time, everything's going well. Sometimes difficult, hard things happen. And But always with Buddhism, you can deal with things better. So it's very practical. Mm. And you can find out, you know, you don't have to just believe what's taught. You can find out, you can practice the meditations. Is it working on your mind? Am I feeling better? Nobody's telling you to just believe something. It's you see if it works. So what is <coughs> what is the true career of a Buddhist then? <laughs> uh, I don't think there is one. No? I, th I think what we're, tr well, what we're trying to get to is enlightenment, but we may not do it in this life, uh, but you might do it in this life. Um, so that's the point, try and enlighten one's mind. Um, that's the only career. I mean, that's it really. We do all sorts of things, like we have a Buddhist centre in Westcliff, and we run that for the benefit of, people in Preston they can be Buddhists or they can just come to some meditation they can take away subjects which help them and ignore subjects they don't feel comfortable with um, and we just do that the our um, spiritual leader um, he encouraged us to just have this building in Preston and put these classes on and people to use them as they wished Mm. And and the spiritual leader is he's called Kel Sangiatso. He he's now retired, but he started this tradition. He came from Tibet in the seventies, um, and he was told by his spiritual guide to come to England and to see if he could help. And um, he has helped, and there's a thousand Buddhist centres worldwide now of this Kadampa tradition. Kadampa. Um, it's a very old form of Buddhism and it's really for families. It's You don't have to go and meditate in a cave. It's like you take it with you in your everyday life. You, you don't do anything different. You apply it within the family, within work. So it's very, very good for the West because we can't just stop and go and sit on a mountain, we, can we? No, no. <laughs> it would be nice, <laughs> nice at times if we well, could. Well, we've all got to earn our money and we've all look after our families and um, so it fits into that very nicely. Mm. And are most uh, Buddhist vegetarians or vegans? Um, it's encouraged to be vegetarian because we don't want to cause a problem for the animals and vegans even better. And at the Buddhist centre, if we're offering food, it, it will be vegetarian. But that's everybody's individual decision. Um, nobody's saying you could... It doesn't mean you can't be a Buddhist, you know, it's, mm. it's that's... You, what happens in Buddhism is there's some rule outlines. They're not really rules, they're outlines, and then people decide themselves, you know. Um, make your own decision what you want to do. Right. Mm. Now, the, there are quite a few things coming up, I think, uh, at the Buddhist Centre yeah. in Preston. Meditation classes for everyone. Yeah. Are they uh, regular? Yes. Um, we've just got a couple of weeks now where we're doing these on Thursdays um, morning at half ten and evening at 7.30 and Saturdays at 10.30. Coming to the end of term now. Those are for everybody. Um, and we'll start those again later. Um People that that is like a drop in meditation. People come along. It's just a fiver, and you get a meditation and a talk from the teacher on a subject, which you can take away and think about or ignore. And then another meditation at the end. And the course hangs together as a course, or people can just drop in. 
And uh, an interesting one is Don't Lose Your Rag. Don't Lose Your Rag. That's me on Sunday. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so we're doing this half day course. Um, we do half day courses and full day courses. This is just half a day, 10 till 1. Um, and it's about what we've been talking about, isn't it? So looking at what would make us lose our rag and trying to think about it differently and a few little meditations to go away and try, which might help a bit with patients. And then people can go away and experiment. And people can come, they no, don't need to have any previous um, experience of meditation, can book in um, or just turn up. And there is a course cost for that, which is £12. And then an open day on Sunday the 17th of August. We thought, yes, that uh, we'd do an open day on Sunday the 17th of August. Um, so people just come in, there'll be some uh, meditation classes going through the day. And that's free and maybe have a look around the building. And then we think we're going to try and make some cakes and maybe even a barbecue. And people can pay for that right. and uh, people can. We've got a very nice building there, which we've spent a lot of time doing up and making look pretty and I've got a nice garden and maybe we'll try and do something for children so that people are not held back you know so you can bring the children and um, we'll fit them into something and uh, I will mention the address and in fact uh, just quickly because of time I could have spent a lot longer talking to you okay. I can I can tell you that Good. but just quickly what about children and Buddhism? Yeah. Um, do people who are Buddhists, is the teachings also for very young children? Um, well, they're, f they're for adults at the moment. Um, although we do have some somebody who brings her three children. I think the youngest one's about eight. Um, we are actually thinking of doing something so that people can bring their children um, and then do a special because we have some children's books that have been written by our spiritual leader um, lovely stories with pictures in about how not to lose your rag and that kind of thing so we are looking at that we'll have to look at the regulations and what we have to fit into but uh, we would like to do that because we're aware that children can benefit of course they can children often understand we go to schools a lot and they ask amazingly um, good questions. Mm. School children's questions are always very deep. I, I would think so, because mm. sadly for some children, schools are not very nice places. Right. And I would imagine that uh, if you are able to deal with the situations mm. in school in a far better way, you could have a much happier life mm. within school. And I'm sorry I'm going to have to okay. uh, move on. Just could you give us the uh, address of where you're situated and any uh, online details where people can have a look? Yes, it's uh, 38 West Cliff, which is down opposite the county hall there on Fishergate Hill. Um, it's um, Meditate in Lanx, or if you just go Preston Buddhist Centre, Vajravarahi Buddhist Centre into Google, it'll get you to our website. Um, the email is meditatinglanks.org.uk and the phone number is 884919. Um, yeah, so we'd love to hear from everybody. And if you want to come on Sunday, you can book in. You can go to Facebook. So we'll have a Facebook page or just turn up. It's OK. It's only a half day course. We'll be able to fit you in. Brilliant. Well, as I say, I could have uh, spent a lot more time in discussion, but can I thank you for coming in this morning? Thank you. And you. Uh, it's been lovely to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. If you have any news or events you'd like to share with Huey and our Chad City team, why not give us an email? Chadcity at preston.fm.